So Lorna is going to share with us her journey and she has some handsome, a handsome man helping her do <laughs> A glamorous assistant over glamorous there. glamorous assistant. <laughs> um, and over to you then, Lorna. Thank you. Um, so as Isabel said, um, my name's Lorna. Uh, I'm 43. Uh, and I'm a teacher from Nile of Sky. So as a teacher, I'm quite used to the whole visual learning things. So hence my glamorous assistant who's sitting in the audience. <laughs> um, it's a, I had, uh, to be honest, I had six pages of notes and various cue cards and I've decided no. Um, there's so much that I would want to tell you. I'm just tying myself in knots. Um, but as far as my, my own personal journey goes, um, as you heard, we filmed a documentary uh, from about 2018, I think, until about 2020, just when COVID hit. And it was just to show people what it's like living with lipedema. Because when I was diagnosed, I had no idea what it was. I had no idea it was a thing. I was like many of us, just convinced that I was fat and whatever I was doing wasn't good enough. Um, and when I did get the diagnosis, as usual, everyone heads to Google. And the, the thing I found was a documentary from America that was absolutely terrifying. And it was almost showing the extremes of what's going to happen to you. And I'm like, oh my goodness, is this, is this the road ahead for me? And it was like, it's not. I mean, you've heard from plenty of folk today. And some people progress, some people don't. And that extreme of the kind of lipedema, huge, massive, huge legs, doesn't necessarily need to happen to me or you or whoever else. Um, going back to diagnosis, I was diagnosed completely by accident. Um, and I wish that I'd been diagnosed sooner. Because again, as we've heard today, like the whole yo-yo dieting is just the worst thing that we can do. And I mean, most people, I would assume, if you're anything like me, you'll have tried every single diet going. Some more successful than others, but generally that up and down all the time. Um, had I known what I know now, I would have, I would hope that I wouldn't be like this, that my, my legs wouldn't be as big, my hips wouldn't be as big, my bum wouldn't be as big. Uh, hindsight, as they say, is a wonderful thing though. Um, uh, when I went to see Mr. Munnach first, it was advice he gave me that was probably the only thing that's really worked. And that's where, you know, you're going to dietitians, you're going to slimming clubs, you're doing whatever else, and they're always punting carb-heavy diets. The only thing that has helped me with inflammation and weight is going zero processed anti-inflammatory. No bread, no pasta, no potatoes, which for somebody from the islands is not very easy at all. Um, but again, it, it, for me, you know, diet, it, it shouldn't be a diet, it has to be something sustainable so that it's not that constant yo-yo. But it's so difficult. You know, everything about lipedema is difficult. You know, getting a diagnosis is difficult. You know, as I said, I was diagnosed almost by accident. It was a good friend of mine who, after I'd been to the doctor for, I don't know, I'd been back and forth numerous times uh, with a terrible pain just sort of in my bum shelf, as they say, uh, I couldn't even tolerate clothes touching. And I went to the doctor, who happens to be quite a famous hill runner, and uh, he told me, well, can you touch the floor with your hands? And like most people, if you want me to demonstrate, I can now. But it's like, yes, I can put the flat of my hand on the floor, because like most of us, very hypermobile. And he goes, oh, well, nothing I can do. Away you go and lose weight which isn't particularly helpful. Um, didn't even bother examining me. Sorry, I'm getting a bit dry. <laughs> didn't bother examining me and just wrote me off, as I think often happens, unfortunately, with people with lipedema who are just seen as fat. And it's like, well, you're fat, it's your own fault. You're lying. You're obviously eating far more than you say. You're not doing the exercise that you say, so go, go away and do what I tell you to do. And I mean, like, has be, it's been mentioned already today as well, most of us have disordered eating. I know I do. I mean, I tend to fast, so that's one of the kind of 
self-care measures I do regularly, so intermittent fasting, I feel incredibly guilty if I have more than two meals a day. You know, there's this huge amount of guilt with lipedema. And it's like, it doesn't seem to matter what you do. You feel like it's not enough because we've been told that it's not enough. You know, society has told us it's not enough. A lot of us, our families have told us it's not enough. Medical professionals are telling us it's not enough. It's our own fault. So we internalize all of this shame, self-blame and carry it with us. And it doesn't matter. You know that you're doing enough exercise. You know that your diet is healthy and you should be losing weight, but it doesn't happen. And the frustration that comes from that is incredible as well. You know, when you feel like you're doing all the things people tell you you should do, but you're not changing the way that you should be changing. You know, less calories, fewer calories in, um, more exercise, you're gonna lose weight. It doesn't always work like that. And especially if you're still eating the inflammatory foods, which, well, for me, certainly was a huge driver. Again, I mean, I think one of the messages that's come across clearly today is that everybody's an individual and we're all different and things that work for me might not work for the next person. Um, and it's, it's almost like trying just, the, it's being consistent with whatever you do to see if it's going to work, giving it a good enough chance and just not giving up because it would be so easy just to say, look, I've had enough. I'm doing everything I possibly can and it doesn't seem to make any difference. I'm in agony most days. I'm living off painkillers. I can't play with my child the way I would like to. I can't even walk around a shop without being totally exhausted and in pain. I have to consider where I go or what I do in a day. You know, and I've, I've given up on going on holiday now because it is just an impossibility. You know, if you are away from home and you don't have even a bed that's the right height, seats that are the right height, every little thing makes life that much more difficult. And again, the blame is always there. And I'll be saying to myself, but you know, this is my fault. I should be doing more. If I could do more, um, I would fit the, mo the mold. But then that is the reason that I've got my glamorous assistant here and I'll come to that later. I mean, one thing, the re but the reason I wanted to illustrate it in the most visual way that I could think of was that every single one of us who is at a, a, a later stage with lipedema, the amount of weight that we're carrying around with us daily, disproportionately, it's no wonder we're knackered. It's no wonder we're in pain. It's no wonder we make noises like old people when we sit down or try and get up. Um, and it is, you know, it's one of these things where we have to be a bit kinder to ourselves. You know, for me, I've spent so many years telling myself it's my fault. Because as I said, most of my, you know, every doctor's appointment, it would be like, oh, you've got a sore thumb, go and lose weight. You know, oh, yes, you're, you know, you've, you've cut yourself badly. Well, I can't do anything for that, but you can go and lose weight. They don't even look at you. Like I was saying before I was diagnosed and the awful pain in my back, he'd refused to even examine me. He just saw what he, he wanted to see. Somebody that he thought was lazy, fat, didn't follow the rules um, and didn't put enough effort in themselves, which is an absolute load of, load of rubbish. Load of rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And that, I mean, that is the thing. Every doctor's appointment, you know, when, when you've been... Like, I don't know how many doctors are in the room. Is, that the, is there a doctor in the room? But, um, <coughs> you know, I don't understand why it takes so long generally for diagnosis. You know, I was 37 when I was diagnosed. Like I say, if I had the knowledge following diagnosis at 13, would I be as I am standing here today? I, probably not. I don't know, but probably not. Um, you know, I went to the doctor for a pain uh, medicine review and uh, she'd recently been to a, a dermatology conference and she said, I've never seen anyone with lipedema in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, will you strip off? So obviously I obliged, tweaked down the compression. Well, it's not quite that simple. It's <laughs> um, and like she said, she just couldn't believe that it hadn't been picked up. 
because my legs are so abnormal, so unusual, it's like, why did nobody see that before? You know, why did the doctor not see how different they were, or midwives, or whoever else, instead of just saying, um, you're fat, you're going to be dead by the time you're 30. You know, you're fat, um, you're obviously lying that this is what you're eating in a day. You know, and when people don't hear you, you feel minimised. And it's like, then to try and do all the self-help things yourself, to try and be kind to yourself, it makes it so hard because nobody else is, you know? It's uh, I will do. So, yeah, if Stuart, if my glamorous assistant here can come up. So, <laughs> if he can get up off the seat. Do you want me standing or sitting down? I sit down if you want. How does that feel, Very heavy. Yeah. So, that's the amount. So, this, the, the weights on here is equivalent. Um, for those of you who did see the documentary, you'll know that I was due to get liposuction. Um, most of you will also know that the not nice report, as we're going to call it in here, um, has put an end to all kind of surgeries. So this would have been the equivalent of what Mr Munnach was going to take off. Uh, well, not quite, actually. It was 36 kilos. So that is in total 33 and a half kilos. So the lovely pink ones at the bottom, that's weights I have to use for swimming because I do swimming regularly swimming because it's the only thing that I can do um, and it makes me feel strong and fit and it's something that I can continually do so if you can find anything like that as well absolutely do it but they are just about three and a half kilos together each of the black and yellow ones well black and orange they are five kilos so I mean the weight distribution is kind of similar so this one is to kind of to represent the shelf and the hips and the bum then your thighs and calves there as well. And it's like, the, like I said, I wanted to really illustrate for ourselves that you can recognise what you're doing in a day. You know, the fact that we get up, that we go to work is incredible, carrying that kind of weight around with us because most folk can't. I mean, you're not, I mean, most people wouldn't be used to carrying that around either. But I would say that regardless of whether you've got lipedema or not, you can't ever be used to carrying that around. It's exhausting. It's painful. Um, and I think it, it speaks for itself like that. You know, and... It feels, it feels really strange because as I was walking, because, my, because I'm not used to my legs being so heavy, it's almost as if the motion, it's as if my legs want to go further than I want it to go. <laughs> I would say as well, my husband, we did a wee trial run at home just to see how they would actually go on and he's a very slim fit guy and he was like, he started making all the noises and everything and he tried to put on a pair of trousers and he couldn't lift his leg to get the trouser on and I mean that is what we're dealing with. And that's the weight but not actually the no. You start to yeah. Widerness. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like we were talking when Stuart was getting these put on. It's like the gait difference because it's almost like if somebody stuffed a pillow in between your legs and then said, "Right, off you go," you know, you're putting all this pressure on your joints. Um, and I mean, really, the the demonstration was just to say, be kind to yourself. We're often not, you know, speak to yourself like your best friend. It's not an easy thing to do. Believe me. But if you can, it's easier then to do the self-care things, you know. I think for me, it's, it's just so impactful. Because even walking from here and back, I can feel it in my hips. It's, it's sore. Yeah. I mean, that's where I get most of the pain as well. But it's no wonder. Because, again, most people with lipedema will have hypermobility as well. So, you know, it's pulling, the constant pulling on the joint is just like rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. Yeah. And even sitting on the chair, I would normally, I would normally cross my legs. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Getting into bed. Yeah. No, I mean everything. That's the thing. Everything is difficult. You know, like I sometimes feel like an old granny. I've got a handle on the bed, so I can turn over, mm. and it, it's like, 
either that or you have to, a good tip ladies, silk nighties, that is <laughs> easy to slide over, but I mean it, it does make everything hard. On that there's also a thing called a snoozle sheet, I don't know if anyone else has got one, um, and it does make you think like I'm in hospital and I'm going to move, but it makes turning over so yeah. much easier. But I would just like to say uh, as well, thank you so much to Talk Lipedema for having me. And can I say to Mr. Munnach as well, like the work that he's done is incredible. And you know, it's not the outcome any of us would want, but like you are so appreciated. And I think that's me. <laughs>